Hello, and welcome to the Wedding Reporter Podcast. Today, we have a really special guest, and we're going to talk all about photography. This is Rebecca Musayev, and we are going to be talking about how to decide which photography style is right for your wedding. And Rebecca is a luxury and legacy wedding photographer based in Nashville, Tennessee, and serving destination locations as well. She's been shooting weddings exclusively for over a decade, and she is an avid gardener, has a passion for cooking and baking, and is always seen holding a cup of tea. I love tea, too. (laughs) She is married to her husband, Musa, and has two children, Olivia, who's four, and Owen, who's one and a half. So welcome, Rebecca. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So I have, like, one random question for you. So... I see that your husband's name is Musa. Is that a nickname after your last name or is that his real name? I know. It's so tricky. It's actually his um, first name. He's actually from oh a little gosh. country called uh, Azerbaijan. So it's just okay. South Africa. So it's a Russian wow. name. <laughs> oh, awesome. So the reason why I have this question is because my husband goes by Chico and it's like a variation of De Chico. So I was like, maybe it's like the same as, as yours too, but that's really cool. So it's like an island off of Russia. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Have you guys ever visited there? We haven't. Um, we always say we want to go back. Cause it's like, it's, it's just South of Russia. It's next to Turkey. Um, wow. so it's like beautiful now, but. Yeah, we haven't been there. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, that's awesome. Anyway, sorry, that was super random to start this off, but we're talking about photography today and not names and last names. So (laughs) um, I just like love to hear your story. What brought you into the world of photography? How many years have you been photographing? Kind of give us the rundown of your career. So photography has always been a part of my life. My dad actually got me into photography. He had it always as his like passion and hobby. And um, that was back in the day when it was just film. So I started in film photography, his old like Minolta um, camera. And then um, I did it just as a hobby alongside him. And I remember when the first like DSLR digital cameras were coming out and that was such a big deal. And we dabbled in that. And then um, I wasn't really good at like drawing or sculpting in school. So I took photography. So my days started in middle school in the dark room, uh, developing my own images. And then I loved it so much. I always just did it through college and I took photo classes there and I, I never thought it would turn into a full-time career. Mm, That's really cool. I love that it just started with your dad and then going into middle school in the dark rooms and everything. It's like you learned the very traditional way to do it, which is awesome. And I feel like that does like tie into your photography style, which we can definitely go into. And that's like so inspiring to me too, because like my husband kind of dabbles in photography. Like he doesn't do it professionally but he does it like more for our family and he's really good at it but like now our daughter like loves like borrowing his camera and just like shooting around and like she is just like so excited if she gets like the Mm -hmm. coolest shot and so it's really cool and she's like only eight so it's cool to like hear how your photography progression and career kind of started just like be, by being inspired by your dad. So that's really cool. Little seeds that are planted. It's really, it's really cool. And still to this day, I shoot Nikon, um, which wow. is like the Delta to Nikon from when he started back in the day. And um, I, I shoot it for many reasons, but partially because of him. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's so sweet. That's really cool. Um, So we're talking about photography styles today, and you have such a beautiful, gorgeous photography style, and I would just love for you to describe it, and like, why did you choose that style, and yeah, let's go from there. Yeah, so my style is really like true to color, light, Um, it tips on like bright and airy, but I try to um, shoot as true to life as possible. And you'll never get like a fad or a trend from me. I really just, I think it goes back to those days in the dark room and literally developing the image as it was kind of captured. Um, I just, I absolutely just love that. I love that. It's like a timeless quality. Um, I want to be able to like look back at my photos like a hundred years from now and it still looks 
as how I would have seen it through my like human eyes. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah. But that being said, I love following the light. So I always say like, I stalk the sun. Yes. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah. And I feel like your style is so timeless. And I think that is a really good thing to consider um, just for wedding photography too. Cause like looking back on those images from that day, I mean, yes, there are trends that happen now. Like it's a time and a place. And like, I think in any wedding you can kind of look back and kind of tell like, okay, that was probably from around that era because, like, that was popular. But, like, I think, you know, just having that, like, heirloom feel and that, like, classic Mm -hmm. style that, like, almost does look like film um, is really cool. And it's, like, you know, a throwback to vintage, but it's also just very timeless for ages to come as well. So I think that's such a cool you know, style that you're in and everything. Um, So what type of couple is kind of most attracted to that? I did kind of go into that a little, but I would love to hear kind of your thoughts of like, who are your couples? um, This has changed and shifted so much as I have changed and shifted so much in my career and with photography. But um, as I stand right now, I tend to attract a more mature, like couple in their life journey. Um, they tend to be like in a graduate program or pursuing like a higher degree of something. Um, typically they're like a doctor, lawyer, business owner. Um, but the most important thing for me is they value photography. They mm-hmm. value the art of it. They value the quality of it. They value what I do. And they really love those just candids and just timeless moments that they might not see that's going on. Um, most of my couples too just like adore black and white imagery, which is what I definitely love too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're they're just refined, traditional, and willing to do whatever it takes to have those moments preserved forever. Oh yeah, that's really cool. I think having a couple that does value photography is so important to the relationship of the photographer and couple. Um, you know, there's certain things that certain shots that they might want that like they've seen you do in the past by looking at your work and you know it's like they know that you can deliver that and they trust you and you know just having that higher level of the relationship between you two I think is really cool really really important (laughs) oh yeah for sure So can you give us a rundown of some other common photography styles and that why couples might consider those for their weddings and maybe describe how these styles look. I know we're doing like an audio and, you know, video thing here. So it's not like we can show you a photo of what exactly this style is, but like maybe if you can, in your own words, do your best descriptions of like some other styles that are out there and maybe how it differs from yours. Yeah. The cool thing about photography is it's an art form. So there is just so many different forms of styles and photography from how it's captured to how it's edited. And that can just, there's a huge gap that um, people select photography based on what is most attractive to them. And there's many different styles for many different reasons, but there could be like dark and moody, which is kind of as titled, (laughs) like a little bit darker, a little bit moodier in the highlights and uh, shadows. You can have like a more artistic, so just different, really cool, different angles and things. Um, Journalistic, so more like editor, editorially like journal kind of style. Um, Flash forward, so if they're super heavy on flash and lighting, you can have like vibrant and contrasty. Um, The list can go on, but Mm -hmm. they're just different forms of art and um, it's completely personal preference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think the style kind of goes into, to like the way someone shoots Mm -hmm. and how they edit. So it's like those two forces kind of combining can sort of create like a photographer's own personal style. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's like, and like you said, it is a little bit hard to define because photographers do mixed styles and they kind of create their own in in certain ways um but I think you did just give like a really good rundown of like you know the dark and moody and the different 
styles that are out there that could like fit your personality and fit even your wedding venue too. I think that has a lot to play into, you know, your wedding style because like, okay, if your wedding venue is like very dark, like, right. You might want a photographer who uses lighting or, you know, if everything is outdoor during the day, like then a photographer who plays off of that light might be best for you. And so, you know, I think all of that, all those things are great things to consider as well. No, for sure. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) definitely. Um, so where should you go to get inspiration for your wedding photos and different styles? Ooh, so first and foremost, like just like the world around you, um, Mm -hmm. things is how you're going to want your, your life captured. Right. Um, and I know we touched upon how photography is an art. So any type of art form, like what do you find beautiful? Um, and that just really goes into like how you want your story to be told and preserved. But the biggest thing is to do your research. So you can look at things like Nashville Bride Guide, um, different wedding inspirations um, to see what styles or trends or things that you like and you can envision for your for your day. Mm -hmm. I think that's really cool. Like, I feel like the very obvious answer is like Pinterest or like, you know, looking on the Internet you know, Instagram, those sort of things. But like, you did make a really good point there where you said, look at the world around you and, Mm -hmm. and draw inspiration from that. And, you know, I think a lot of that is like looking at the type of venue you're in and drawing inspiration from that. Like, what do you like as a couple? Like, you know, I think a lot of times we look at other weddings to get inspiration for our wedding, but you know, kind of taking other elements in as far as like, you know, movies you like, or just different things that you as a couple love, and how to kind of incorporate that and how, you know, the style of, you know, this movie that you like, or the style of like, yeah, you know, the nature around your venue, like incorporate all those things to kind of like, make your decisions as far as like, your wedding feel and style and your photography style go as well. Oh, for sure. And like, while I absolutely love uh, Instagram and Pinterest, I find it can be a little overstimulating at times. And you have to ask yourself, is that really reflecting you? um, Mm -hmm. Or is that just something that you're like, oh, yes, I either like or dislike this. Um, So yeah, taking inventory on what you find beautiful, what reflects you as a couple, what you envision for your wedding. And a lot of that can just happen just by thinking about it. Um, And then just, I'm a big believer on just doing the research and doing like education research. So like Mm -hmm. National Bride Guide blogs, things like that to actually find and hone down on what you really want. Oh yeah, for sure. And it's great with what we do too is because we do posts about this and we interview different vendors about this. And I think, you know, putting it on a podcast for people to listen to and be able to get that really great advice straight from the vendors who you are going to be hiring for your wedding to really find out, okay, how do I go about this? Because like for most people, it's their first time ever planning an event this big and they don't, they've maybe never hired a photographer for X amount of dollars in their lifetime. And so they don't know really how to go about it. And so I think you're right, doing your research, looking at these great resources that are out there, National Bright Guide podcast and whatnot is Mm -hmm. a really great thing to do. So (laughs) thanks for the shout out. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So are there any other factors to consider when choosing your photography style? We did kind of go over this, like the lighting, the theme, and that sort of thing. Um, Anything else that you kind of wanted to share about that topic? Um, well, I think that any professional photographer can take a picture, right? Right. That's why we're photographers. But I feel like the biggest thing is knowing about their experience. Um, and that's what you're investing to. Like when a couple picks me, they're not just 
picking me for my images. They're picking me for my years of like hundreds of wedding shot, hours upon hours of, of time investing to honing my craft. And that's just mm-hmm. really, really important to think about and to know. But the number one thing for me um, is you have to trust. You have to trust your photographer. You have to trust the vendors you're hiring for your wedding. And you need to share a connection with. Because if you don't trust them and you don't share a connection with them, it's just not going to work. Um, yeah. You want them to represent you and to serve you in the best way they possibly can. And they can only do that through that um, trust and that connection. So oh, that's yeah. the number one, number one thing. <laughs> yeah, that's really great advice because... Hiring professionals, I cannot stress enough how important that is for your wedding. You oh, don't yeah. want to hire somebody who, I mean, is super just like brand new and doesn't know how to show up on time to your wedding or may not be able to get the shots you want because this is the most important day of your life. And, you know, a vendor can make or break it, honestly. 100 percent and like we hear all the all the stories yes. about this, but it really can because it's so much more than just the service they provide but it's them being there with you throughout that whole day oh, and yeah. also the fact that this is such an important milestone in your life you really want it to go as smooth and as seamlessly as possible yeah for sure and there's so much more like you said that you do besides just taking a photo, like oh, yeah. the years of experience you have had, the, I feel like you have to have so much interpersonal communication skills as well to be a photographer, because yeah. like you said, you are that person with them throughout that entire day. And with family, with family who yes. does like almost ever all thrown yeah. into one big room together and that oh yeah always has some great dynamics <laughs> oh yeah for sure yeah having to like memorize names of people and like you know knowing who the mom and dad yes. are and all those family dynamics like you have yes. to study that like that takes a skill as a so photographer and I feel photography really is kind of like an iceberg where the tip of it we see is the pretty images and all that. But what you don't see is all of it's, you know, when you own a business, it's not a nine to five, it's a 24 seven. And having like knowing that upon everything beneath the tip of the iceberg, I mean, there's so much that goes into it and a lot of preparation that's not camera related um, to be able to serve your client best on wedding day. Oh yeah, for sure. Just I'm sure you're in this season right now, just like fielding emails and, you know, seeing <laughs> it, who's going to be a right fit for you, who's going to put yeah. their deposit down. Like there's that whole like clerical side of being yep. a wedding pro. And then, you mm-hmm. know, as far as like touching base with them and meeting and, you know, making sure you have a vendor list and knowing like who's who and what shots they want and like what's important yep. to them. and you know, what time are we doing um, the ceremony and is the lighting going to be right? And how do I need to prepare for that? And who's second shooting and where are they going to be versus where I'm going to be at this moment in the day? And like venue wise, do I go upstairs? Am I downstairs? Like during this moment, it's like all these things that you have to remember and just so you're on top of it and you have to go with the flow and like there's always going to be a wrench thrown in there we talk about that a lot in on this podcast too and on national bride guide is like yeah there's always going to be something that goes professionals they can handle it so yeah (laughs) oh yeah for sure that's awesome So what are some signs to look for when hiring a professional and reliable photographer? We went over this a little bit, but like what other things can you kind of look for to make sure that person is legit and will deliver? Oh my goodness. Um, To my doing your research, doing your research. So finding a photographer that you like, great. Um, start with reviews, start seeing how they treated past clients, um, where their outreach is, ask questions. So you can, I've gotten some even like really nitty gritty detail questions. How do I back up the images? 
what happens if you're not there on wedding day? Um, What happens if you get into like a car accident on the way? Like all these different components and things that you can get a really good feel. And once again, you're going to have to trust your gut and also we'll go with that like trust component. Um, But you can ask questions and a really professional photographer should have no problem walking you through their process, showing you a contract, um, answering all the questions that you may have on wedding day, but also being able to take charge and know that you feel really confident in them. Like they should be guiding you. They should be walking you through their process, their procedures, their questionnaires, their um, understanding and knowledge of the day where you're like, oh my goodness, I'm not stressed anymore. I I know that this is all going to work out. Or they mentioned some things that I didn't think about uh, with lighting or with the, t- the season. or um, So that's like really, really important. So do your research and ask your questions. Oh yeah, that is huge. And <laughs> Man, providing that level of service, that's how you know you've hired somebody professional and who you know is going to deliver by having, you know, the vendor, the photographer walking you through the process, like knowing which, anticipating which questions you're going to answer at this point in your, in your planning process and having those answers prepared. And with all those years of experience, like... I mean, it's unmatched really to, you know, it's, it's a night and day difference when you can tell working with professional vendors versus, you know, oh, somebody sure. who's not professional. You want to ask like, Hey, do you have any galleries from my venue or yeah. if not from that season or from that, you know, any details about that would pertain to your day, like ask for those galleries and a real professional photographer will be like, here's my list of galleries. Um, so you can mm-hmm. actually get a true vibe of their style in your venue during that time of year um, and make sure it all matches up. Oh yeah. I think that is a really clear sign and way to see what they've delivered in the past in the same season at the same venue Mm -hmm. to know, to anticipate what you, what they're going to deliver to you. So I think that is a really huge deal. So yeah, (laughs) I think that's about all for our questions and everything in our conversation. Is there anything else you kind of wanted to leave us with or anything else you wanted to share? Um, I guess I'd say, remember that like styles and trends come and go, right? So mm-hmm. my biggest piece of advice, especially someone who values legacy, meaning what you leave behind, what is for the future to come is pick something that will withstand the test of time, something that is beautiful, but something that will also reflect you as a couple. Um, and I think to me, that's why I love photography so much because we're literally preserving history and passing it forward. Yes. I love that. That's such a great note to end on. Leave the legacy. Mm-hmm. And with the heirloom photography, I think that is so cool. So it was so great having you, Rebecca. We will definitely put all of your contact information and everything in the show notes. If you're listening to this and you're not in Nashville, she does do destination weddings. Too. Do. So reach out to her and she would love to work with you. So yes. yes. And we will talk soon. Sounds good. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Yep. Bye, Rebecca. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Wedding Reporter Podcast. I hope you learned a little bit and had fun today. To find more resources and podcast episodes, visit NashvilleBrideGuide.com for more information. And as always, click the subscribe button and leave us a review. Until next time, I'm Alyssa DeChico signing off.